Hey, how's it going everybody? I am the Gerbil. I've got some exciting announcements to make today. Two big announcements actually. You can probably already see them right there in the bullet point list. Uh, I'm going to get to those in a second. Also, I'd like to talk a lot in this video about Nisa, her placement with the Ewok squads, and why I think we got her. And then I'm going to show three battles with and without Nisa doing some different team compositions. And I'm going to give you some statistics about my experiences with Nisa so far. Um, and I think where she really is going to fit into the game and how you want to use her. And I'm going to show you all three battles, different team compositions against the same Revan opponent. Why Revan? Because Revan is a good solid testing base. Uh, we all know Darth, or not Darth, but just Jedi Revan teams. It's a very durable team. It's got a lot of survivability. So if Ewoks can get through that, you know, with Jedi uh, General uh, Kenobi in there and Jolie reviving and Revan Savior, then it's a pretty good idea what they can do against a lot of other teams. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? So first things first, big announcement here. You may have seen uh, not too long ago about two and three months ago, I did a couple collabs with Nooch Too Good, AKA Star Wars Dad. Well, guess what? Um, he and I are formalizing a new show called Nooch and the Gerbil very appropriately named. We're going to be recording it every other week and bringing it to you very, very soon. Uh, it is going to be kind of a general summary um, Star Wars Galaxy Heroes news chit chat show. We hope to start bringing in people like fellow guild mates, some of the content providers, and basically start hosting some folks on our show and just spreading the good news and our thoughts and opinions about it. And if you watch his channel, you know that he is a really, really cool guy. Uh, really exciting, has a great positive energy and vibe. Nooch is amazing at, at like strategizing and planning out pathways for farming. He does all these roster reviews for the community. He is so good at community engagement. And I bring to the table, obviously if you watch my channel, you know that I tend to take the road less traveled. So while he advocates geos, I'm over here going, nah, I think, I think Phoenix is still the way to go, um, honestly with Captain Rex. Yes, he is actually. But anyway, I hope you all can tune in. There's a link to his channel down in the in the discussion descriptions. So check it out. Go sub him and uh, we'll see you soon on his channel. Also available now. I'm going to go ahead and release this to the public. It's like release the Kraken. Um, I am a Discord light user. I don't really use it a lot, especially in China where it's kind of blocked by the Great Firewall. Um, yes, I get on there, but I don't get in a whole lot. Nonetheless, I've had countless people I feel ask me um, for my Discord and I've been getting a lot of direct messages and friend requests and I can't really keep up with that. So I have gone ahead and created a Discord, but I'm taking mine in a slightly different approach I think than a lot of other Star Wars Galaxy Heroes content creators do. And in my Discord, what I want to share more is uh, I want some community engagement. I want an easier way for you people and boys and girls and, and gerbils and, and Jawas to be able to find me, I guess, and reach out and ask questions when you have them. So like the in my server, which is small but growing, um, there is a channel for Ask Gerbil. If you got questions about anything you've seen on a video and you wanna talk to me more than just a comment on YouTube, post them there and maybe even I'll do a video about it. Uh, also, um, there's a, a you choose section, which I think could be kind of fun, where I'm gonna post some random stuff from time to time. I put a Swarovski one there just to test for fun. Uh, and, and I'm just gonna ask like, hey, think I should relic nine Nisa, right? And if you want to see what that looks like, you know, let me know. And if the vote wins, I will commit to it. Um, not always. I'll put in the comments with a, whether I'm really going to commit or not. But that way you can kind of help guide the content you're going to see on my channel. There's also uh, a channel on there that um, I said my adopted home because I've been in China for a very, very long time. And every time I go back home to America, uh, I get inundated with questions, great questions. People are always very curious, but I always run into people that, 
uh, or I don't want to say misguided, but maybe misinformed a little bit on what life really is like here. And so I've just been posting some fun kind of oddball things. Uh, like today I stumbled across, um, you know, to me, I just take it for granted. It's normal, but, uh, there's all these children's places where the kids go and they play and they're wonderful. Many of them are educational, but a common trend in these places, uh, they have little fish petting pools, like literally put your hand in the water and pet the fish. Uh, and this one was full of some pretty large koi. And I was like, wow, that's not something you see back home. So I took a picture and I shared it. Other than that, there's, I don't know what's gonna be on my Discord channel, but if you want to join, here's the link right here down below. And I welcome you, um, like every other Discord channel, please, let's keep it family friendly, at least every Discord channel that I get involved with. Family safe, family friendly. My five-year-old sometimes watches as I'm texting or looks at the pictures with me. So let's keep it cool and let's have some fun and I'll see you there, all right? Those are my announcements. Let's move on. So Ewoks, Nisa, Wicket, Paplu. I don't know why I'm naming them all. Where does Nisa go? Um, I have seen a lot of discussion about her and I, I, I don't think anyone knows for sure yet. But what if I were to tell you, contrary to what CG said, they said that they brought Nisa to the game to elevate Ewoks in the meta. And I think that that is actually... A misdirection. It's a little wag the dog kind of thing. What if Nisa isn't really meant to lift the Ewoks, but she's here to replace Wicket? Uh, and so I, th I really, I really still feel that uh, Wicket is going to be a core or a central part of General Leia Organa, whatever her title is, GL Leia Organa, part of her squad. I think that CG is really trying to make this one a thematic team. I think uh, Drogon or whatever his name is, I think he's gonna be a tank. I think that her team is gonna be heavily stealth synergized. Tebow gives stealth and he has nowhere to go in the game. Wicket applies stealth uh, and goes into stealth himself. He's an attacker, um, so he's great to come out. I mean, like you cannot separate Leah and Wicket when you're thinking Return of the Jedi. Uh, even like Hot Toys, who makes like $600 Star Wars collectible toys, they recently did a bundle of e uh, Indoor Leia and Wicket, and it was fabulous, amazing collectible piece. They're together everywhere. So I think that they're going to stay together. And I think her kit is going to specifically have name drops for Wicket. And then Tebow is there to provide stealth. R2 provides stealth. Drogon, I think, is going to be the tank. He's lost his arms or he's limbless, whatever they say, because he's absorbing the hits. And then Leia is going to reflect it. And I think Leia is going to give those Ewoks the rebel tag. Um, that way they reflect the damage. So this is my noggin thinking, and I'm probably wrong. Let me know what you think on my new Discord. Anyway, moving on. But where we are right now, that's speculation. With some extensive testing, here's what I think. In GAC, on defense, I have had some pretty, I don't know, decent results here. Of course, it's very, very, very limited, but I've tried to talk to my GAC opponents and they got some feedback for it. But Omicron Chirpa, I think the best defensive team is Elder, Logre, Poplu, and No Wicket. Sadly, sorry to say, I'm gonna be able to explain that in a moment. Um, but also for offense, I think the most effective team is gonna be Wicket and Nisa, the double attacker with all of the passive boosts and bonuses you're getting out of Nisa's kit makes this team a lot faster, which I'm gonna show you, and a heck of a lot more powerful. It really is a strong offensive team. In Territory Wars, we lose the Omicron and Sherpa, but we do get one on Nisa if you're brave enough to place it there. And I think it is it, it makes that team really, really, really beefy. And I don't think you're gonna hold, I think you're gonna time out your opponents. And honestly, that's what you want because you want to time them out so that they go in to the next match with preloaded turn meter. Alternatively, if they if they don't want to spend five minutes of their life battling it, they're going to overcompensate and throw a GL at it or something that is going to just be a kind of a waste for this defensive squad. So um, I think that this is going to be a fantastic, though extremely annoying team on defense. Now in 3v3, skies open, right? I do think so far the best 3v3 teams are going to be Chief Chirpa, Nisa, and Paplu. And then a back wall or early mid game 
uh, offensive team is Tebow Scout Wicket. Now, if, again, if you follow my channel forever and you know how to mod your Ewoks right and you mod them for speed, Tebow with Wicket, and generally I put in Poplu, um, but Tebow, Wicket, and third Ewok can destroy a lot of early mid game teams that are much slower. If you have a turn meter advantage and you get out at first, you can 100% control the flow of the turn meter, especially maybe if you put in Lagre or even Scout because his basic removes turn meter, Tebow's removes all turn meter on basic. And then of course, Wicked puts them in into stealth to um, trigger off Tebow's basic turn meter removal. And of course he gives a little bit of healing and critical damage up and some other shenanigans nothing too exciting but early game it's actually quite effective in 3v3 GV GAC all right let's get to some vid shall we here's some gameplay so this is going to be standard Ewoks this is what I mean by like pre Nisa and here's what I'm up against that you can see there Relic 6 Revan Yoda Basil Shan Joe Lee and and General Kenobi all of those are relic 5 except for Revan now it's notable that I mean you've got one two three four journey guide characters up there uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Zetas versus four Zetas and no journey guides. Some key statistics over here on the side of the screen. The first time I'm able to drop an enemy, which is going to be Kenobi in every match, this one took 30 seconds. That's it, 30 seconds, and they didn't get a turn before that. You want a, your Ewoks to be incredibly fast, and you want them to be pretty durable, uh, because once their turn, turn meter train runs out, they start to suffer until their cooldowns reset. So the first time they knocked out one of my tunes was at three minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock. So it took them 90 seconds to drop Chirpa, who of course immediately got revived. But this is gonna play on and as expected, we're going to lose at two minutes and 31 seconds. So it takes half the time, two and a half minutes and we're gonna lose. That's okay, that's expected. Ewoks generally do not beat Jedi, especially uh, Revan squads. It's not likely. So this is going to be our baseline for comparison. Now let's throw in the Nisa effect. What do we get if we take out Wicket and we put in Nisa? Well, here we go. Check out the statistics. First thing, red means it got worse. Green means it got better. So the first enemy knockdown took a lot longer. Instead of 30 seconds, it took 74 seconds. So a minute and 14 seconds. This team hits a lot softer. Wicket is a is definitely putting out a lot more damage output. I would also like to stress here though that I am using a six star Nisa. Let that soak in for a second. This is a six star Nisa. Not even gear 12 yet, she's gear 11. So even at gear 11, we are able to hold our ground because this squad is going to time out the computer. No, that's not the most amazing because a human probably would play this a lot better, especially with Revan's mark ability. Um, but it also means that Nisa's potency is incredibly low and her speed is much lower than it should be. And her, of course, her offense power is way way lower. I mean, it's like in the 2000 range. I have since Relic Sevender and her offense is now up into the 7000. And that's with potency mod sets. I am not modding her for speed. You should not either. She wants potency and I would say, I don't think she wants critical chance either. I think she wants potency and offense. Contrary to what I've already seen a lot of people putting on uh, critical chance, between her kit, Wicket's kit, and um, I think that's just the two of them, she gives herself critical chance up, and I think one of the Omicrons does it as well when the match starts. So you can see she's already got crit chance up, so she doesn't need crit mod sets. Don't put crit chance on her, it just, it's, that's kind of a waste. Anyway, um, the enemy does not defeat a single Ewok in this five minute timeout. Again, a human would mark better, but this times out, which is definitely an improvement over losing, um, and it, it uh, they do not even take down one Ewok in the full five minutes. So by pulling out Wicket and putting in Nisa, uh, it is definitely elevating, but I can't say it's elevating the team in meta, but it is definitely making the team way, way, more durable, and uh, they have a higher net damage output, even though it is 
grindier. Why do I say net damage output? Because we're able to take down characters more often, not as fast. It has to gradually build up through Nisa's kit. There's some kind of, I forget what it is right offhand, but there is something that allows her to be, to begin ramping up damage. Um, and over time, a million cuts basically add up. So, you know, if you lose, you can't beat anyone. So yeah, it's an improvement, but it is very, very slow. It is incredibly slow and you never want to time out even on offense. All right, so let's move on to the third one. What happens now if we take out a support unit, Logre in this case, and we leave in both Wicket and Sherpa? This is impressive, watch this. Okay, so we're, we're hitting pretty good there. Um, and you know what, actually this might be, Shoot, I hope I'm not wrong. This might be my Relics 5 or something Nisa, because that damage is not gear 12 or 11. Folks, I I stand corrected. I'll try to mark that in in the video under edits, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a Relic Nisa. Uh, sorry about that. Nonetheless, we knocked down Kenobi a little bit faster. Uh, it took 26 seconds. Um, they do knock down one of our Ewoks. I don't remember who it is, but someone's going to fall down at 307, but that is... 23 seconds later for the AI than before. And of course we get the best outcome. We're gonna win. We're gonna min win at a minute and 51 seconds. So it takes us about three minutes. Um, so without a doubt, the Nisa Wicket effect, when you put them together, is that the team becomes a lot more aggressive. Notice the health situation on my team right now. Everybody but Poplu is at full health and full protection. And that doesn't really matter for Poplu because Poplu regenerates insanely quick. I mean, he, he just, every buff, every debuff gives him 5% health and protection back, right? So why didn't he get protection right there? I don't know, that was weird. Something might've prevented that, but yeah. So you, you it doesn't really matter. As long as Poplu's standing, it's okay. But uh, yeah, Nisa makes the team a lot beefier in terms of durability, survivability, defense. Wicked is, is is going to be your heaviest hitter and he's a turn meter engine and provides some passive uh, healing uh, both protection but primarily health twice the health amount of healing so wicked helps the team stay alive nisa definitely helps it stay alive nisa's other abilities just ensure a lot more um survivability with some tenacity up some extra health for the team etc etc and I have to say for offense, this is the best team I've come across. And I have tested this against Darth Revan, Bounty Hunters, Night Sisters, uh, Jedi Knight Luke. I've thrown it at a couple of the GLs. It's just not worth your time. I don't think there's any real chance. Might be able to outrun a Sith Eternal, um, but like Slicker, Kenobi, not worth it. Um, yeah, so I think this is by far the best offensive team right now. And that is unfortunately without Logra. I think you need to keep Poplu in there because his basic dispels, you don't have a lot of dispel on Ewoks. So you need that basic, you need that constant assisting. And of course, in GAC with Chirpa's Omicron, they're gonna all assist. You get a 100% chance to assist with every special plus Nisa's assist. So you're guaranteed two assists per turn. That's going to be crazy. Anyway, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really do. If so, give me a thumbs up. Give me a sub. I would really appreciate it. Most of you are not subbed, so please sub, and I will catch you later. Bye-bye. Fall down. Fall down. There you go. She fell down. All right. There's the victory. Bye-bye.